It's never too early to start planning out systems, even if it's just you. If you have that goal to eventually in the future be more than just you, think about it now. I'm proof that that kind of person can let go of some control and not have the business fall apart. You're listening to Thrive by Design, business, marketing, and lifestyle strategies for your jewelry brand to flourish and thrive. Let's get started. Welcome to Thrive by Design, episode 166. Hey there, it's Tracy Matthews, the Chief Visionary Officer over at Flourish and Thrive Academy. And I am super stoked because I have a special guest on the show today, and she is a former student. She's also been on the show before. Her name is Kristen Baird of Kristen Baird Designs, and I'm super excited to have Kristen on the show to talk a little bit more about how she left her business for two months. And look, the girl's a total control freak. She is. Uh, she told us that on the show, so I'm not. I'm not calling her out on something she doesn't know. But when we started working with her two years ago, she had like a really unique voice and her visioning and her brand. She's very driven and determined. But something was missing, and she couldn't figure out how to actually like grow and scale her business. And in a very short period of time, she was able to create a business that can thrive without her physically being in her studio space. She was awarded an amazing opportunity to go to Lacoste, France to work for two months as an apprentice jeweler for her alma mater, SCAD, which was really cool. And she just has this really spunky, spontaneous energy. And while I was traveling through Europe, she shot me a text and she's like, Tracy, I want to pitch you for the show. How about this? How Total Control Freak goes to leave her business for two months <laughs> It doesn't fall apart or stop running without her. So I'm like, girl, let's do this. Let's let's talk about the angle. And she sent me a Loom video and an audio. And here we are talking about her adventures later because I love this. And one of the reasons why I started Flourish and Thrive Academy so, so many years ago was specifically so that I could help designers build a business that they could walk away from if they wanted to or take a vacation or, and make sure that they're paying themselves a living abundant salary, not just pennies every single week or nothing, which oftentimes is what happens. And Kristen has done that. She's mastered this in a very short period of time. She has won so many awards lately that it's been insane. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in the episode. But the thing that I'm the most proud about with Kristen is that she really took action. And that's the key. When she met us two years ago at Flourish and Thrive Live here in New York City, she had no idea who Flourish and Thrive Academy was. She was invited by one of our sponsors, Halstead, and because she had applied for the Halstead grant that year and became a runner-up. She wasn't a winner that year. She was very determined. She wanted to get the Halstead grant the following year. And so she took the feedback and went with it and worked with us to help her get there. And within one year, she had won the Halstead Grant, set up her business so she could walk away, was starting to make a ton of money. I interviewed her about some of the transformations that she made on her website due to the feedback that we gave her and how that's helped her grow her business. And um, a lot of what we did with Kristen is exactly what we do in our SOS coaching program. So it was just an amazing transformation and so fun to watch. And I mentioned this briefly before that Kristen, we met Kristen at our live event for the first time here in New York City. Our live event is officially sold out by now. It's actually happening in a couple of weeks here in New York on September 26th and 27th. We have a really amazing lineup. So I'm going to give you a little FOMO right now because we have all the usual suspects over here. Robin and I will be keynoting We have Sabina Hitchin from Press for Success coming to talk about PR. I have my good friend Susie Moore coming to talk about how to build your email list with super awesome trick that not a lot of people think about. It's not a trick. It's actually a strategy and it's awesome. Totally works. I've been using it and list has been growing peeps and lots of traffic on my site. I got to tell you that much. We also have a great influencer panel. We have Janine Just showing up. We have Aggie Burnett. And we have Brittany Hennessy, who was on the episode 165 last week, talking about influencer strategy. That panel is all curated around how to get seen by influencers, how to pitch influencers, how to become an influencer yourself so that you can get more exposure for your brand. 
It's pretty amazing. And then, of course, on our business day, we have Nina Cooper, Hillary Halstead Scott, Jewelers Mutual is coming in to do some educating about all things insurance. It was the hottest topic last year. And of course, we always like to talk about money. So I have a new money expert coming in, Ingrid Heike, and she's going to be talking about how to guarantee that your business is profitable regardless of the size. So it's going to be an amazing lineup. We're going to be talking about all things from using video to grow your brand to, you know, really connecting with your customers because the whole theme this year is about connection and creating that connection on all levels at every single touch point in your business is what helps it grow. So sadly, tickets are sold out, but we do have virtual passes available. So I wanted to invite you guys to come join it. I will definitely have a link in the show notes, but you can head on over to flourishthriveacademy.com forward slash virtual pass to grab yours. You will get access to the live stream on the day and all the recordings so you can watch them later. I highly recommend that you do live stream because you'll get special perks and bonuses and behind the scenes looks and access to some of the intimate workshops, which won't be available in the recordings later. So definitely check it out. Head on over to flourishthriveacademy.com forward slash virtual pass to pick yours up, or you can just check it out in the show notes. All right, so we're going to dive in in a moment, but before I do, I wanted to take a word from our sponsor. Our sponsor today is ninadesigns.com. Nina Designs is a wholesale jewelry supply company featuring charms, findings, leather, supplies. You got it. So if you are a jewelry maker who's just starting out or really trying to grow their business, Nina is the place to shop from for your, all your supply needs. They have amazing products. And the cool thing about Nina is that she's a jewelry designer just like you. And what Nina Designs has done is they started practicing fair trade and sustainable practices, not only in manufacturing, but in materials and supplies from the very get-go. With their manufacturers in Indonesia and in Bali, They are always promoting the staff within. They are paying fair wages and, you know, really supporting the communities that they are manufacturing in. And the awesome part about Nina is that they are committed to supporting small business. Nina has been not only a contributor to our podcast, but also our live event every single year. And she really wants to help small businesses succeed. And so I love businesses that are in it to help support other small businesses. So head on over to ninadesigns.com and start shopping. And the awesome part is that Nina has created an amazing discount for the Flourish and Thrive slash Thrive by Design listeners. So you can enter the code FLOURISH in all caps 2018 for $15 off your $50 order. So this is an amazing opportunity for you to save some money. We always recommend saving some cash if you have the opportunity to. So head on over to Nina Designs and start shopping today. We'll definitely have the link in the show notes for you to check everything out. So I would love to introduce Kristen. Here's her formal introduction. Kristen is an award-winning jewelry designer inspired by the waters, landscapes, and flora from the scenes of the South that she has called home for so, so long. In a time where mass manufacturing is predominant, Kristen and her team utilize and preserve traditional metalsmithing skills as they delicately and precisely craft each piece by hand in Kristen's Savannah, Georgia studio, now in France too. And the past 12 months have been huge for Kristen's brand as she was honored as as Generation Next 20 Under 40 in Savannah Magazine, which is super awesome. She won the Halstead Grant and was named the best local jewelry designer, the best local artist, and the best local artisan shop by Connect Savannah and Savannah Morning News, respectively. Awesome, right? Having just returned from a two-month residency in France in collaboration with SCAD, Kristen's work and successes have been covered in press both nationally and internationally as she seeks to make her mark on the fine jewelry industry. Kristen holds a BFA in jewelry design with a certificate in CAD design from Savannah's College of Art and Design, and she is a certified bench jeweler trained under master goldsmith Blaine Lewis. Well, if that's not awesome, then listen to this because no matter where you are in business, you're going to really enjoy this. Today, I have Kristen Baird-Rabin on the show today. I'm super excited to have Kristen on the show. 
I don't know if you remember, but I had Kristen here. I've said your name, Kristen, like seven times already. <laughs> <laughs> I had Kristen on the show uh, around this time, I think Case. last year to talk about <laughs> your website transformation. And I yes. can't remember exactly when that episode went live, but we were going to link it in the show notes because it was a really great episode about how Kristen just took tiny little tasks and set it up in the right way and used Hey Carson to help transform her website, which helped her actually win the Halstead grant. And we were joking around right before the show about how it's almost time for you to pass over the crown to the next Halstead grant winner. <laughs> I know. I'm so excited. I keep watching, like waiting for who's going to win it. It's oh, so exciting. <laughs> well, first of all, like welcome to the show, Kristen. It's great to have you here. Oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks so, for having for- me. For those of you who don't know, Kristen Baird is an amazing jewelry designer. She has won the Halstead Grant last year and won like a ton of money and supplies and press opportunities and amazingness for her business. Uh, she's been in the Flourish and Thrive community for a total of, I think, exactly two years, almost right, yeah. right around now. Like uh, two years and like a couple of weeks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because you came to our live event. That's, you found out about us because Hillary Halstead Scott, one of our sponsors and friends over here at Flourish and Thrive, told you that this would be a great event for you to attend. And so you flew to New York um, yep. and <laughs> met us at the live event. You decided to join our mastermind and worked one-on-one with us. You went like straight for the top, <laughs> like most people in the yeah. community. And gosh, within two years, so much has changed for your business. And I'm just like super happy for you. And I wanted to have you on the show today because you just took an amazing... And I'm calling it a trip, but it actually was like artist in residence. You had this amazing opportunity presented to you that allowed you to actually yes. go to France for two months and basically like leave your business. And it still was operating and making a ton of yeah. money. And that's just so exciting. Yep. <laughs> so we're going to go through all the details. And you know, in the intro, I introduced you. So we'll save the formal introductions for later. But just really briefly, give us like this, the quick highlight reel of you and your business and how you got into jewelry design. And uh, let's do that. Okay. So I kind of fell into jewelry design. I went to the Savannah College of Art and Design. And uh, I was a double major in architecture and interior design, which wasn't quite the best fit for me. So I tried a jewelry class and I loved it. It was one of those immediate moments. Fell in love. Totally love it. I graduated from SCAD and decided I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur, didn't know how to get there. So I started kind of building the foundation for my business. And about three years ago, I went full-time into business and have never looked back. So it's been a really exciting journey. Um, A lot of work, obviously, because... Being in business is not easy. And then over time, you know, like like we were saying about two years ago, I came and went to the Flourish and Thrive live event. Last year, I joined the Mastermind, won the Halstead Grant. And then this year, it's been really exciting taking all of that momentum and all of those exciting steps and rolling it into being awarded this residency to go to France for two months, sponsored to create a new collection and be an ambassador for my alma mater, which is SCAD. So it's kind of riding this wave of momentum of exciting press hits and being uh, best local jeweler here in Savannah, being voted that or being voted best local artist in Savannah, having Oprah wear some of my jewelry, which is crazy. That was crazy. Um, when, you, when I saw that, like, I was like, what, Kristen? <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's been crazy things like that that... Three years ago, when I took the jump, I would have literally never believed. I would have been like, you're crazy. But, but here we are. So um, that's one thing about entrepreneurship and being in business is you just never know what's going to happen. And uh, if you just give yourself the tools and the opportunities will come if you work hard. <laughs> that's that's my, so true. I tell myself that all the time. <laughs> that's that's so. a good mantra. And what I want to say about Kristen is that she's definitely a hard worker. She's very committed. She takes action, which I think is the most important thing that anyone who's starting out in business can do for themselves. You know, all of us have mindset issues. You know, we, we were talking in the pre-show and we were just kind of touching base because we quickly like... We, we were texting like a lot of the time that you were in Lacoste because I was also in Europe yeah. and I was like trying to go out there to, just to see you, but it just didn't work out the timing and locations where we were. But at the end of the day, like 
you said, you basically pitched me on this episode, which I thought was really amazing. You're like, oh, how about this for a headline? <laughs> Two years ago, I never thought I would be able to leave my business. And now I'm doing this like uh, apprenticeship in the South of France and my business is still making money when I'm not there. And I never thought that this would be possible. And I think it's so cool because what you mm-hmm. said is like, Two years ago, you were, you know, your business was very different. You had applied for the Halstead grant. You didn't win. You were like one of the runners up and you were on a mission. You're like, I want that grant. I want to get it. I'm going to do whatever it takes. I'm taking the feedback that I got. I am taking action. I'm joining the Flourish and Thrive Mastermind so that I can, you know, so that they can support me in my goals. And man, I've never seen someone just like, have an eye for the prize and go after it so much like you did because you got I it. I do kind of, I was going to say, woo. <laughs> <laughs> I, I set those big goals and I kind of don't tell anyone. I just put my head down and go for it. And I have one that I'm working on right now. Like the last one, you know, it was Halster Grant. Then it was this process for going to France. And now it's like, I have another one that I'm not talking about yet, but it's like, I'm working on it. <laughs> You can share it with me so, privately so I can hold the space for you. There you go. There you go. I'll, I'll do that. <laughs> so I want to talk, so. let's, let's dial this back to a couple of years ago. You started your business three years ago as a solopreneur. Two years ago, you were doing this mm-hmm. on your own. You were kind of transitioning, trying to figure out like your brand messaging and your voice and all that stuff. And you had a really strong collection because you went to art school and um, they helped you groom that. You kind of wanted to move into a new direction. Yes but you were doing everything yourself. And tell us a little bit about that process. And, you know, I'm setting you up like for, for you setting the course for you to be able to take, <laughs> to take this trip. So what yes, there you go. like, and like, why did you decide to kind of focus on some of these like things that seemed silly at the time to help grow your business? Yeah, that's a, that's a really great question. So like you said, three years ago, I started the business two years ago. I had just applied for the Halstead grant. I had gotten so busy in my business that I knew I needed extra help at the bench because I knew, you know, I want to do all these things, you know, apply for the Halstead grant, or I really want to be the face of my business. And I, I was already seeing just a year in that I couldn't do it all myself. I couldn't make and publicize and website and everything all myself. There just wasn't enough hours. So that's when I took the jumping off point to hire my first bench jeweler, which was a whole big thing. I mean, kind of crazy that, you know, I'm a jeweler and I'm very proud of, you know, my craftsmanship and my designs, but I needed to, in order to, to grow the business and to scale and to be, you know, eventually profitable enough for me to really, you know, make a living for myself, I knew I needed to bring in extra help. So that's when I got my first jeweler and it was really exciting learning how to work with somebody and, and train somebody and teach them how you want it done takes time. And I'm still learning that, but it's, yep. it's been great. She's my, my bench jeweler has been with me for two years, which is awesome. But you know, at that point, it was like, okay, so it's me and the bench jeweler and I'm here all the time and I'm teaching her everything. And I'm kind of micromanaging, which you kind of have to do when you start, but you know, and I was like, okay. And that's when I applied for the mastermind. So I was like, all right, well, what's next? You know, I have a jeweler, I have me. I'm starting to get a little bit of momentum, but what's next? And um, so I, I jumped in on that. And then it was like, okay, I'm learning so much and I don't and know is, what's next. But this is, you said you joined the mastermind. It broke up, it broke up <laughs> just a little bit. So yes. uh, you joined the mastermind. So okay. I just want to. Mm-hmm. Uh, Talk clearly. We don't have the mastermind program anymore, but we do have a high level coaching program over here okay. called SOS, which is very similar, but just slightly tweaked because it's mostly focused on online and digital. But I just want, wanted people to hear that, uh, yes. that you just dove into that and you started yes. setting up, diving into the content and setting up systems. Yes. So one of the big things was, you know, systems. You got to create systems. You've got to have like processes for everything, which at that point I was like, okay, it's me and my jeweler. And I tell her everything I want her to do, and I'm there in person. And so, why why systems? I don't get it. But I I, I, was, I knew they were important. So I'm like, well, someday in the future, maybe it's going to be me and more people. Yeah. And maybe the systems thing really is important. And I kind of just jumped in, and I was like, this sounds silly. I'm creating systems for me, 
And for myself, it's like me, myself, and I plus a jeweler. And we're creating systems for kind of like these hypothetical people that aren't even on my team yet. And, uh, but I, I, I went for it and was like, I know that this is important. Like, you know, every CEO, every big business, they have systems, they have manuals. So it's obviously a thing. So I just took off and I started creating documents in Google Drive. I transitioned everything so that it was on the cloud and uh, created these like really cool databases that I could search from my phone or I could search from my computer or I could email to somebody and they could search. And so I was creating these like hypothetical roles of like, well, if I ever have an assistant or if I ever work with a photographer, you know, outside of just me taking my photos or a copywriter or whatever. Mm -hmm. Then this year, all of a sudden it was like, you know what? I don't have enough time. I need a virtual assistant. And all of these systems started falling into place. And I, I hired my first virtual assistant and she's amazing. And it took literally, it changed my whole business, adding her to the team. And all of a sudden, these hypothetical systems, it was like, she had these questions and I was like, oh, just refer to this or just refer to that. Or here's a document that has literally everything you need to know in it. And she was like, Kristen, I've worked with so many different people and I've never had somebody that could train me like this because there's never been these types of systems. And uh, that was a pretty cool moment because it all kind of came together it was like, oh, really? Okay, so this is this is good. Are you using the systems ahead, organizer that we gave you guys? Are you using the systems organizer that we gave you guys? Or did yeah. you create your own system? Yep. Okay, awesome. Nope, awesome. it's the same one that you guys have. I've just made it bigger and kind of yeah. tailored to more of me. But yeah, it's the exact same like spreadsheet that links to all the files and folders that you know, you can search everything in and access from multiple places. So it's been a really cool experience though, because I I hired this VA and I had this like crazy out of the atmosphere idea that I'm going to apply for this program with my alma mater that I could potentially go to France for two whole months, not like going back and forth, but literally go there And uh, what's going to happen? And, you know, how am I going to keep my business running, my jeweler working on things, and my virtual assistant working on things while I'm in France on a different time zone and everything? And um, it worked. So, (laughs) so okay, so here here I I am. uh, Yeah. Oh, go ahead. I want to dial back just a little bit to talk about how you got Mm -hmm. this. I mean, girl, you're like got the golden touch, you got the Halstead grant. You know, you launch your business within three years, you're like hiring people, which is amazing. And now you get this amazing opportunity to do a residency in Lacoste. So how did you like yeah. you applied for it, but like how did it kind of come about? Like like take us through that process. Yeah. So back in 2016, I think I was about a year into my business, I saw this this opportunity and it was it's done by the Savannah College of Art and Design and they select alumni who are in, you know, artists or product-based designers or or what have you. And um, they select these alumni to go to France for two months. During different times of the year, I I applied for summer because I knew that was my slower time. So I was like, well, we'll turn that into something. So basically, you get to go there. You get a completely furnished studio, depending on what you do. Mine was a jewelry studio. It's open to the public. You can sell out of your studio, which is amazing. And That's you're awesome. there fully... I know you're, you're there fully sponsored. So everything is taken care of. Your housing, your food. It's really a dream opportunity because <laughs> you just go and you create and you meet people and you network and you talk about your work to people from literally so many countries. You know, Australia, China, Japan, Germany, Norway, Sweden, UK, Canada you know, Brazil, I mean, literally all these countries, people came through and you get the opportunity to, to tell them about what you do and to show them the maker side of what you're doing and, you know, show that Oprah wears your jewelry and <laughs> everybody around the world understands that, which is crazy. So it was an awesome opportunity. And, and so I saw about it in 2016 and I was like, that'll never be me. I can't leave. My business is too young. I, I can't do this. And it came back up in December. I actually got an invitation to apply kind of with a nudge like, hey, you should apply for this. 
from the school. And so that was kind of an opportunity I couldn't turn down. So I submitted and, and they were like, okay, here we go. Here you go. And uh, it took them a while to get back to me. So by the time they made the, the decision, I had about like five to six weeks before I was in France. So it was a very quick turnaround of... And you had to be you know, prepared. You're going... Yeah, like you're going and now you're there, which pretty much was all made doable by the fact that I had systems in place and it was a very quick like, all right, here's what we're doing. Here's what we're doing. Here's what we're doing. And I'll be back in two months. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Yeah. So did you sell a lot of jewelry while you were in Lacoste? I did actually. It was so interesting. It was an opportunity for me to see that my international target customer is like the identical target customer of my US version, just an international version. So like they appreciate the same things just on different kind of, you know, a, di- a little bit different, but they appreciate the same things. They kind of look the same. Oh my gosh. A little bit. I mean, it was really actually an awesome experience for me to see that because, you know, I want to think bigger. So it was seeing like, that person looks like they would be my target customer. And they literally are. And they're from Germany. And here we go. Like, that's so cool. (laughs) That's so cool. So what did you do to set your team for success? I mean, your small and mighty team, because you have a virtual assistant and a jeweler. How did you set them Mm -hmm. up for success when you were leaving? And like, how did you assign them projects and stuff like that so that they were continually working? Yes. So that really came down to, for my jeweler, I set up trays of things that I knew... I could have her working on while I was gone. And some of it was stuff for orders and some of it was things like uh, preparing for the holidays. So I already had things. I was from France. I was writing my caster saying, okay, I need this and this and this. Send it to my studio. All right. Once it gets to the studio, you know, Kate, I need you to do this and this and this for it. And Marina, who's my um, VA, I need you to do this and this and this to get ready to promote it. And so we have things just ready to roll for the holidays, which is kind of cool. And you know, I use a lot of Loom, which is great yeah. to communicate with teams. I use that literally like every day. So I was wait, what did you Loom say? Vis- you use a lot of what? Loom, L O O M. Loom. Oh, Loom. Like a, Loom videos. Yeah, Loom. Yeah. Sorry, I'm a little. I thought you were, at first. I thought up. you said I use a lot of blue. I'm like, yeah, you use a lot of blue in your designs. I like totally. <laughs> Yeah, I love Loom. Like, I'm obsessed with Loom. I used to use Snagit all the time, and I don't like it because you have to Mm -hmm. store the videos on your computer. And Loom is a complete cloud service, which is so much better because all the links are stored in the cloud, and you don't have to worry about storing all these videos on your computer, and people can access it from everywhere. Yep. Yes. I love it. So, I use Loom. So, I mean, you know, I was in France six hours ahead. I'd get up, I'd start working. I'd send some messages to my virtual assistant and I'd say, here's what we're doing today. Can you take care of this? And I'd send her a quick video and then I'd send basically text messages over FaceTime or over mm-hmm. you know iMessage to my jeweler and be like, here's what's on the plate for today. Text me if you need anything. Send me a FaceTime message. You know, Call me on FaceTime if you yep. have a question. And we just worked it that way and it was great. I mean, it allowed us to continue to move forward. And if they had questions, they could either consult their kind of manuals or their different spreadsheets or whatever that they know that they have access to. Or if they had something that wasn't on there, they could send me a message and you know it would be a little longer turnaround, like 12 hour turnaround instead of yeah. you know, two minutes. But it made it doable. And they, they knew, all right, well, I sent Kristen a message. I can work on this in the meantime. So they're very efficient, which is great. It speaks to the the amount or the the awesomeness of the people I have. But it was just something we were able to make it work, and you know, Google Hangouts to be able to chat back and forth or, or whatever. It, yeah. it was all really super doable and um, kind of unbelievable because I would have never thought I could do that ever. <laughs> ever. That is amazing. Okay, so. Yeah. One of the things, so you started making systems when it was just you, and then you hired the jeweler. Yes. And then you, we didn't qu- yes. totally touch on that, but I know that that's true because you told me before, and we've, I've known mm-hmm. you for a long time. So you, it was just you. You thought it was weird. I'm like, you're like, I guess I need systems, but maybe someday I will hire someone. So I'm going to do this. Then it's the jeweler. So you had your production systems in place or like uh, mm-hmm. how to make things kind of thing, your way of doing things. 
And then you, you started doing the other types of systems for your VA to kind of work on eventually. But there were like the things that you were doing. Exactly. How did you make time when it was just you to make systems? And how do you continue to do that as your business grows? Because we, there's so many systems that probably still aren't documented, but then also they change over time. Like as you start to do things maybe a different way or up level the way that you're doing it and stuff like that. Yes. Yeah. So when I first started, it was totally silly. I was like, I'm making these things for people I don't have. And it's literally just me. But I went with the process. I trusted the process, which is something I've learned from the beginning. Like trust the process. It will be worth it. And also it's always better to be prepared before than to be scrambling at the last second. So I'm a big believer in that. So I was just, I was like, you know, every time I do something that's like something that should be documented, I'm just going to take five extra minutes and document it. And I'm going to create a quick spreadsheet. And I got so used to documenting what I was doing that it took less and less time. And it was like, oh, okay, I'll just write that down real quick or like copy and paste that and just pull it from whatever I just did or swipe emails or quick outline and just fill it in really fast and just create the structure. And, um, you know, it was just maybe 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day I'd spend just making these systems or, you know, some days I wouldn't do any, but some days I'd like really get into it and be like, I'm going to get all of my photos straight so that I can access them from anywhere. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to name them all so that if somebody ever comes in, I can say, well, this is how they're all named so they can search it. So it was just things like that. And, um, you know, then as I started, like I added the jeweler and I was like, Ooh, okay, this is actually really making sense. It makes it easier on her. It makes it easier on me. I'm going to have her document a few systems. So then I kind of was able to split and let her do some of the work also. And then especially when I added my VA, because she's very focused on the business side of things, I trained her how to write a system. And I was like, all right, instead of me writing the systems all the time, can you write the systems? And then I'll check over them and add a couple little notes and we'll just keep moving. So then it was like I could delegate creating the systems and I could just double check them and she could learn it and write it down and it, it freed up even more time. So it became a process of like, we all understand how important the systems are. And as a team, we work on strengthening the process and keeping it moving forward. So then basically now my VA will be like, ooh, this is something I just did. And I think it'd be really good to have this documented. And I'm like, go for it, do it. So now it's like this kind of self-sustaining process of you know updating things or saying, oh, you know what? Something changed. Let's update that real quick. And she'll, she'll just do it for me, which is great. <laughs> so how much time yeah. a week do you individually devote to making systems? It's probably, probably about an maybe an hour a week for my virtual assistant. It's maybe 20 to 30 minutes for me. And then my jeweler at this point, we're pretty much rocking and rolling. So she, her systems are in place and we just keep moving. But I'd say creating new systems, an hour to two a week, maybe. Yeah, Um, great. Some weeks more, some weeks less. Yeah, it's not bad. Like right now we're getting ready to launch a new collection. So you know, I know for a fact today, Marina has been doing like probably four hours of just getting things into spreadsheets and getting SKU mm-hmm. numbers done and naming pictures. But once that's done, then it won't be done for another couple of months until the next collection. So, you know, the bulk of it happening. That's awesome. So, okay. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit more about delegating because a lot of this is, you know, it starts with the systems, but then it really comes down to being able to let go a little bit like of control and delegate because (laughs) you saw this opportunity and I'm sure I was probably beating it into your head that like, you know, if you need support, I have support because you will be able to grow so much more. And you've, Mm -hmm. you know, you realize that for yourself. And, you know, that's something that I always talk about. Like, how did you take the leap? You know, because I'm sure that there was a moment when you felt like, like, I can't really financially swing this at the moment, but how I'm just going to go for it and try it. Like, how Mm -hmm. did you transition like the first person in? And then decide to to hire the second person. Yeah, it. So the first, the jeweler, that was a really scary one because that was just that was me giving up some control of my actual making process. So that was huge for me, and it took a while to transition. But I have to say, my husband is super supportive of my business, and he's the cool, calm, logical one, and I'm the like excited, energetic, like super doer. And and he like talks sense into me sometimes. <laughs> so 
he was kind of like, hey, you need, you will not ever be able to make it all, all the time if you want to grow your business. And, and I, you know, I heard it from everybody, but like he was the one that was trying to like, look, you, you got to do this. So that was like first step. And then the virtual assistant, I heard so many people talking about getting virtual assistants. And one of them actually is um, Mary over at Gardens of the Sun. And I love watching what she does in her business. And she was in my mastermind. So I remember watching her and Trang Dai and then both being like, yeah, I have virtual assistants. It's great. I'm like, how do I do this? How do I get a virtual assistant? How do I trust somebody with like a lot of aspects of my business that I've never had anybody touch? Like, it's always been me. And um, watching them succeed and grow their businesses, it was like, okay, they've got the secret sauce. I got to get the secret sauce. <laughs> exactly. So it was like, I, you know, and they're like, their businesses are amazing. They're super in control of their businesses, but they trust their people. And that's important. You know, it all comes down to like, I feel like there's a point at which being a control freak and being a little bit obsessive becomes hindering to your process and to your flow. And you have to figure out where that is and you have to acknowledge it and you have to like learn how to limit that. Because there's a point where it's like really good, you know, because it's really good to understand and be in control of everything. But then there's a point where it's no longer a good quality. And I've learned that about myself, which is hard. (laughs) It's hard to learn that. (laughs) But uh, yeah, so it was like, I started looking for a virtual assistant and I, um, I put out a post on our neighborhood Facebook chat page, actually. And somebody who was a virtual assistant said, you know, I'm so busy, but I've got this girl. She just moved to your area. So she actually lives in the area. And she's a military wife and she's a mom and she's you know really great. And uh, I did an interview. I met her in person. I did a, a couple of different chats with her. And I was like, you know what? I think this is going to work. So we did a, a trial period and you know limited hours, just testing it out. And we hit it off really well. So now she's a super integral part of my business. And you know here we are. So, And what, do you, what does she do for you? So she now updates my website. So she's learned Shopify. She's only been with me since what, March, I think. Mm -hmm. And she's learned how to do Shopify through all the videos that I've done and through her just kind of wanting to learn. She does a lot of my graphics. She's got a background with some graphic design. So she's very versatile there. She is now starting to take over a lot of my customer communication, which is brand new as of this week or last week. So she's starting to... We've created a system of how I will... Or how we'll handle intake of custom clients Mm -hmm. and how she's going to actually be a part of that process instead of me only, which is awesome because it was starting to be so overwhelming that I couldn't handle it. Um, So she's coming in. She's doing a lot of the back and forth and she's handling a lot of the contracts and the payments and, and just updating my customers so that I can focus on the actual design and the the more, you know, kind of front end type of things. So she does that. She does a lot of my organization. She's starting to do some of my scheduling. Awesome. So it's a lot of things. It's a lot, but it's all been like, you know, okay, it's a new week. Let's talk about one new thing you can work on or, you know, or whatever. It's it's not a floodgates are open, you know, I just hired you. Here's everything. It's like exactly. one thing at a time. Let's figure it out. And so it's now to the point where she understands me, I understand her, and she can be like, hey, I think I can take this off of your plate. Like, why don't you send me a Loom video and show me, and then I'll just kind of take it over. And I'm like, great, that sounds awesome. So she takes ownership because she's involved and invested in it too. So I love it. That's so great. And she works from home or she comes into your studio? So she works from home, but because she lives close, about every two weeks when I'm here, we'll have like a a lunch meetup or something where she'll come to the studio and grab a few things that she needs and, you know, whatever. But she can be here in person, but she primarily works from home. So, which is great for her because then she's got her daughter and her family and it's, you know, her way of life. And it's awesome to feel like my little business is making an impact on somebody and their family. So that's pretty awesome. (laughs) That is a great way to put it. Because one of the things that I love about having a dispersed virtual team is that you can hire such amazing talent who maybe can't go to a nine to five job because they, you know, because of childcare concerns and or 
they want to have a more flexible schedule where you know they can get some stuff during done during the day and some stuff after their kids go to bed. And it's a really wonderful way to get amazing talent because number one, oftentimes they're able to work for not as much as you'd be able to hire a full-time employee because they don't have to hire childcare. Yep. And that's a huge factor in, you know, and if they're getting like more money that's coming straight to them and they're not paying it out for childcare, it's great. But it's also a great way to find just like amazing talent in different random places where otherwise, you know, one of the amazing things about Abby are, um, she's really like the integrator mm-hmm. for the company, but you know, I call her operations manager or whatever. You know, she moved to be closer to her family in Prescott, Arizona, where there's not a lot going on except for Halstead there. And so, you know, like the (laughs) jobs that she could do were like working at the university or other places. And it required her having to like pay for childcare and stuff like that. So when she came across this job, she tells me all the time, like how she loves it so much and how grateful she is because it literally works so well for her schedule. But she's just like really excited to work for this company because of the opportunity that it's presented her. And so what I want to tell all of you, and I'm sure Kristen, you feel the same way or you've experienced this the same way from the person that you've hired, that there are so many opportunities to hire people virtually, whether you're hiring an individual like Kristen and I have with our team where you hire people through a hiring process, or whether you work with a freelancing service like FreeUp or Odesk or something like that. And I'll have links to those things below. We have some special deal for Flourish and Thrive for free up that gives you like 10% off you know, your first worker. You can keep hiring the same people on an as-needed basis. And that's a great way to kind of get some stuff off your plate for projects. I know, mm-hmm. Kristen, you hired Hey Carson. That was sort yep. of a virtual gig, uh, which was... And yep. I'll have a link for Hey Carson. We just did an episode with Jonathan, I think last week or a couple weeks ago as we're oh, recording nice. this. Uh, So he's on the show talking a little bit more about their service. And I'll link that episode as well. All about being able to delegate work for your Shopify site. But it's just a great way to free up time. And a lot of these services are not very expensive. And the amount of speed that either another human or a service like something like Hey Carson or FreeUp or Odesk or something like that, where you find individuals to work with, the amount of time you save taking that off your plate because people are actually good at the tasks that you have to do mm-hmm. instead yep, of doing yep. things that you're not good at because you don't want to spend money can free your time up to do the things that you're actually really good at. And so right. this is amazing. So thank you so much for sharing that story because I know that you've done... Yeah, absolutely. You didn't even talk about other things that you've outsourced, but you've outsourced other things in different ways. And so it's just yep. exciting to see your business grow. And I'm sure in a year, you're going to pitch me on some other thing like, look at what I did here. <laughs> <laughs> You won't be able to get rid of me that easily. I'm not going to be able to get rid of you, which is great because you know you're awesome. It's funny because today I batch my podcast episodes in uh, you know in batches. So today I've had three interviews, and one was with nice. my uh, former dance teacher. She retired from dance teaching dance, but she's talked about mindset and like how important that is. And I interviewed Karina, one of our other students. Do you know Karina from Waffles and Honey? Mm-hmm. I used her as, as an example yep. for when you did your website revamp too. She was on talking about branded (laughs) photography. So it's just been a fun day of of watching, you know, Flourish and Thrive's been around for six years and to see the designers kind of come up through the ranks. It's amazing. So Kristen, is there anything else that you want to share with the audience today? I think my biggest thing is it's never too early to start planning out systems, even if it's just you. If you have that goal to eventually in the future be more than just you, Think about it now. And I am proof that a control freak, obsessive kind of person, personality, type A, like crazy nut. I'm proof that that kind of person can let go of some control and enough to step away for two months and not have the business fall apart. So I would have never thought I could be here right now saying that. So that just is my kind of... uh, takeaway for everybody, hopefully. <laughs> maybe hopefully it's a good maybe little golden nugget. <laughs> maybe that's the title of the episode, How a Total Control Trophy Walked Away for Her Business. <laughs> and it didn't fall apart. I mean, I feel like I feel like to be a jeweler, you kind of have to be a little bit like that. So and to be an entrepreneur, you kind of got to be a little like that. So I yeah, feel like I am. people might identify. <laughs> I am totally so. girl and I totally get you. And I laugh because you're like you're serious type A, you like run marathons and you're like always training and you're doing crazy stuff. So 
<laughs> and even for those of you who aren't like type A psychos like me and Kristen, <laughs> you know, you'll still benefit it's from still, starting early yeah. with your system. Yeah. Because it, for those it, of it you still applies. If you're a maker who's going to make and you want to keep making, like get someone else to do in the other stuff, you know? Yeah. It's just no matter what you're doing, you just pick what you like and then the rest of it goes to somebody else. That's what you got to figure out. And whether you want to make and have everybody else do the other stuff or whether you want to delegate some of the making and do some of the other stuff, like that's kind of what I've figured out. I want to do a little bit of both, but you know, I want to delegate the accounting to accounting for jewelers and I want to do Hey Carson for my website and I want to have a virtual assistant and a jeweler and, you know, a photo editor that I found on one of those sites. And, you know, it's like figure out what works for you so I can have some time at the bench and I can have some time being the face of my business in France or, you know, whatever. It's just figuring out what works for you. 100%. I'm ending it with that. There's my summary. The end. (laughs) The end. Okay. Awesome. Where can people find you, Kristen? Yes. So I'm on Instagram and Facebook at Kristen Baird Jewelry. K-R-I-S-T-E-N-B-A-I-R-D. And I'm also on the website online, on the, on the website, on the interwebs at uh, kristenbaird.com. So, Amazing. Amazing. Al- always around. Yeah. Always around. Always, uh, always working on something new. So I love it. You rock you the Casbah girl. Thank you so much for being here. It's always a pleasure and a joy to have you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to the show today. Definitely make sure that you check out our sponsor, Nina Designs. Really amazing product, sustainably sourced, and so many benefits. And you can use that discount code FLOURISH2018 to get your $15 off your order. Awesome. And we'll have all that over at the show notes. So you can check out flourishthriveacademy.com forward slash episode 166. flourishthriveacademy.com forward slash episode 166. I like to speak slowly sometimes because I talk very fast. And I just want to remind you, grab a seat, a virtual seat, watch the live event in your PJs. Dude, do this now. It is going to be amazing. So you can grab your virtual ticket over at floorstriveacademy.com forward slash virtual pass and get all the benefits of being in New York City live from the comfort of your couch in your pajamas or wherever you are. And you also have access to all the recordings. And we're giving away some special bonuses to those who actually buy a virtual ticket and watch it virtually at the same time. So let's do this, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to email us over at support at flourishthriveacademy.com. And until next time, this is Tracy Matthews signing off. <laughs>